Hi everyone, it's Karen here for Artist Live, and I'm going to be altering this metal wing set. Um, I was given to me by a good friend, Kim, who is today uh, came to the live show. And um, but if you're watching this after the live show and you're watching the recording, then the links to all the um, products are below in the description area. And this is how the like she gave it to me a while back. And the reason why I didn't alter it until now is because the wings are just so beautiful that I really did not know what to do with it and I didn't want to ruin the beauty of these wings. However, um, I got an idea and I just rolled with it and I wanted to, uh, this show basically is going to be more about how to use the patina effect and the rust paste to alter anything so I'm going to be altering this altering this these wings these wings are by it they're called main metal angel wings by salvaged and this is the back of them which is really nice and this is you can hang it so Kim since you gave me this then you get to have it after one of them after the show she gets to keep one of them since she gave me this as a gift so one for you one for me so let's get started so I'm going to basically alter it. The first thing I did is create it, sorry, this centerpiece. And this is a cool way to, to create it. I'll show you what I used. Um, hi, Monica. Um, okay, so I use this. This is, um, oh God, I always forget the name of it. Plaster, yeah, plaster. Okay, I bought this once at Amazon. Jasmine will put the link, or the link will be below in the description area. And it's really fun to use. It's kind of what they used to use to make, to like to cast, like you know when you broke your arm well, back in the days. Now they have more sophisticated stuff. But you see it's very soft. And I'll show you, it has like, it's kind of like, has a whitish powder on it. And um, I'm going to just, Cut strips of it to create the circle. Okay, see how it has a powder to it. So I don't know if you can see all the powder on the on my table. It's a really fun medium to use you can create really nice textures with it so I like using it okay so the way this works I'm sure you've used it before or have seen it used before you just wet it with a little bit of water okay and then you can what you can do then it becomes soft I think it needs a little bit more water I'll put it the other side then it becomes soft and you can basically do whatever you want with it. And when you finish with it, it turns, uh, it basically will turn up the same way, like it will stay the way that you like it. So if you go like that, it will stay like that. And it will be kind of like a, it will be white. They look kind of like gauze strips, but they're not. I don't want to wet it too too much because then what will happen is it will take longer to dry okay I have some water to absorb here so okay dokey and let's measure it out to make sure that it is enough. I think I might have done it a little bit thicker. Let's see, I'm gonna measure with the, no, I need it a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna cut a little bit more of it. And it feels like in it, when you wet it, it kind of sticks together. But if it's dry, it doesn't stick as well. Hi, Sim Jimena. How are you? Okay, hold on. Let me just um, put some more. So again, I'm going to create, um, take out some more from the bag. 
and um, let's cut a little bit more of this. So you know me, I like working with different things. I always like experimenting with different things. That's just me. I think most of us now in the in the in the crafty world, we love experimenting. So that's nice. Oh, I love how soft it is. You see how I can just move it, and it creates really nice texture. You could use this, like you know, to make a dress or just I mean a dress. I meant to say like you know something, some kind of altered doll dress not for yourself dress okay hold on i think this will be the right size okay so you see i want to kind of create this cool texture you can still it's still wet so you can move it you can make a flower out of this it almost looks like a flower so this is the the center of it okay and then hold on let me clean this mess so so this is, and it easily dries, which is nice. Uh, and it dries quickly, even if it's air dried. Um, the next thing I did is I took, I'm gonna move the wings a little bit. I took some wire. This is like leftover Prima wire. Just, you know, their typical wire. I don't know, I think I got this like when I was on their design team way back then and I still have not used it all. Because they, they, they give it to me in a clamp like this. I remember they just had had just come out so okay so I did and I went and I did another little circle on top and okay kind of created some more texture right so you know me and my texture So the nice thing about this is that I want to let this kind of dry in in the um, on the wings while I alter them all around. Okay, so and I'm gonna use some heavy gel. So I'm gonna use oh no, not heavy gel. I actually can use the 3D gel. Doesn't really matter. You can use heavy gel or the 3D gel. And all I want to do is just kind of. This one won't, like, I mean, this is not part of the, th the um, plaster, so it's not gonna stick that well. You need to kind of help it stick. Okay, so there's that. And, um, there we go. And I think a little bit here too. Okay, good. And then I'm gonna take my wings back and I'm gonna put a bunch of this in the back maybe more like here so I know exactly where I want it to stick and this is gonna be the center where I'm going to uh, place the ward after so I mean like I said like there it is so you can use this for anything basically like um, this plaster thing I really really like because it's easily shaped into anything and you can make whatever you want so oh hi Petra so okay so this is the beginning and now we're going to alter the um, actual wings with the texture paste yay okay so we have the original texture paste which is the rust paste, or this is the box. And it comes in three different colors. Somehow the third color has disappeared on me, but it's okay because it's not using it today. So it comes in the red, the brown, and it also has a gold color. Somewhere I have to find it or open a new one. So there is the three of those, the two of those. Um, so this is the original one, uh, which I loved and used in a lot of projects, especially on Ustream. And then we have the new one, which is, oops, which is the, the new patina effect paste and this comes in three colors as well it comes in ooh, let me get it out and the turquoise 
the blue, it's, they call it blue. I mean, it looks turquoise to me, but it, it comes in the mint green, which is a beautiful color. And it comes in the brass, which is a kind of a more of a shiny. So these two will ha have more of a texture grid to it, but this one has um, a, sh a metallic thing. So I'm gonna be using basically all of these today. And I'm debating whether or not to put gloves on. Okay, hold on, I'm gonna get a paintbrush. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna grab the paste, uh, the brass paste. Now, this is mainly, there's no really a uh, huge technique uh, curve or learning curve with this. I mean, you just have to experiment and see what you lo like. So for example, if you see my, like, depending on like the project, you might want to be heavy on certain things and others. So this one is heavier on the red and the brown and also has some of the turquoise. So I go back and forth. I want to see if I will make my wings today a little bit more, a bit lighter. So I'm gonna play around. So I'm gonna be doing it as I'm doing it with you. So that's the fun part. And let me sure I'm in, in, the, in the frame. Okay. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the brass. And actually, no, before I do that, let me just give a little bit of a dry, um, make this a little bit drier so I could actually add the paste and the paints and the metallic paints and of course we will be using the waxes after the amazing new waxes by Prima Marketing from Finabare they're called All, um, Art Alchemy Waxes and I'll show you different colors another thing um, that I am having is I am giving away one of the waxes, which you'll see later. Um, it's I'm giving I'm mean, having a couple of giveaways on my blog, so please visit my blog if you want to like enter any of them. There's some really good prizes. One of them is one of these waxes, one of these, which is my favorite. This is actually this is the actual wax that I'm giving away. Okay, it's the vintage gold. It's my favorite one, and. Um, yeah, the links are below or like or or like or right now if you're live then you can watch it. Okay, so I'm going to be taking this brass color, the effect and I'm going to just kind of lightly brush it. I am covering most of it, but not all of it, just in certain areas. Because I want it when I am adding the other the other products, I want to make sure that this will definitely show underneath. And I will again use it also on top. So what the nice thing about these rust pastes and or the patina pastes is, or all the pastes that I'm using today is that you can combine them together and create really nice effects. And that's what's nice about this. Um, you create these really cool a uh, rusted kind of look effect and that's um, and that's why I like um, that's what I like about these okay so let me just I want to add a little bit of this color okay so there you saw not all of it I covered some most of it but not all of it okay then I want to use the turquoise. So why I'm putting the turquoise and the and the metal first and the brass first? Because when I'm gonna rust, usually in a rusted kind of uh, look, you know, and like a vintage or antique look, you do have those oxidized um, components um, kind of sneaking out from underneath the rusted areas. So that's basically what I'm achieving. If I'm putting this as the bottom layer then what's going to happen is that when I put the other layers on top, these will peek through and will show off, um, will show off, it will show up in the, um, in the look, in the, in the actual surface. And yes, ja Yasmin is just saying that if you join us here, you can also enter to win these art sleeves that I have. Yasmin is giving them away. So that's another give. There's a lot of giveaways going on everywhere. So it's worth to look around. Um, I was having, uh, it, it's my blog's anniversary this month. 
the 10th. I have been blogging for, I guess, 10 years. Not 10 years. What am I talking about? Since uh, March 10th, not 10 years, six years uh, since March, since 2011. And so I'm, I was give, I'm giving away a couple of good prices. Plus, I'm also having a different giveaway, and that is I'm giving away a couple of collections from some from us uh, from sponsors from the Magia Design sponsor is uh, sponsoring a couple of collections, and then dress my crafts, which I don't know if you've seen some of the projects that I've been doing lately with the sequins and the art stones which is my new favorite technique now. Um, so I'm giving some of those away as well. So check out my blog so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, I'll put all the links below after. Okay, so you see how I'm covering in certain areas, uh, the blue in certain areas, just so I can get that blue peeking from underneath afterwards. I'm going to now start adding the darker colors and this mint green I'm going to leave towards the end okay so the first thing I'm going to do is yes I see that I'm not always washing between um, applications because they're mixing together I'm, and I usually use them all together I'm not so worried about cross contaminating but if you are then definitely wash your your paint brushes in between Okay, so the nice thing about this, the, the, the dark brown rust paste is that it's very gritty and it gives, oops, I hope it didn't move anything. It gives a really gritty kind of effect, which I like a lot. Mm -hmm. Oops. So again, I don't want to add too much of this. I want to be able to have some of the blue peeking through. If I add too much of this, it will take away from the rust and from the pattern. You see, I feel like if I put too much, it takes away from the pattern that I'm using. Uh, sorry. Okay, so sorry, I'm just moving my, um, okay. So, hi Elaine, good morning. Sorry, Elaine. Uh, I think times have changed. You missed last week, so you didn't know. Our times have, our clocks have changed, but yours haven't. Um, so I'm not on early. I'm on on time, but we had like uh, in spring. This always happens. Somebody gets confused with the times. Last week, Yasmin ended up starting way later because of the same reason. So, uh, the daylight saving times kind of makes everybody crazy here. So sorry about that. Um, so, okay, so I'm gonna continue talking about the application of this. Um, so I'm just putting it in, again, in certain areas, not everywhere because as you can see, I want those other colors to kind of peek through. So, uh, yeah, so that's what I'm doing, okay. So now I am going to wash, this is the dark one and I don't want such darkness in my paint brushes. But Elaine, you haven't missed much. Um, I just show the wings, how they look before and you can look back and see that after. So um, you just missed how I did this. The rest is just applying the, these are just wings that I bought, so. Okay, hold on, just cleaning up underneath. Okay, so now we're gonna add the red. Um, this is the the rust paste, but this is the red one, the, um, the red colored one. And I'm gonna use a different paintbrush, I think, because this one is too dirty. Okay. Okay. Okay, so this is actually my favorite color out of all of them. This is what for me looks the most rusty out of everything. But when it combines nicely with the with the dark brown and the blue, it looks so so good. So what I like is this rust rust red rust which is 
so so nice when it combines with the blue it especially if the things are still wet which is what you want it gives it I'll show I don't know if I can see oops um, right there it kind of gives a really nice kind of hue of green teal uh, when it's combined together so as you can see a lot of the blue has been covered right but you still have it peeking out from certain areas and I will add some more blue because as you can see for me it's not enough so what I end up doing is I end up playing back and forth let me turn these around because I think I'm missing out some um, some areas here so I go back and forth between the rust paste and the patina effect because I really feel like you need a combination of all of them to create that effect that you like that I like so much um, okay so let me see I want to get a different brush I want a different um, maybe this one okay okay so I'm going to add a little bit of blue again okay and this time with a smaller brush so in certain areas and now it's beautiful it's combining with that red so you do have the picking underneath but you also have it rusted on top which is really nice you can do both and they both look gorgeous okay I love how gritty also this paste is like you can feel the greediness in it and I will have to clean this really well. Nice thing about this mat, I just got this mat recently. It's the Ken Oliver uh, mat. I think I put it up up above in the this in the. You know, add it to the description area if people want to hear about it. And these brushes, I actually didn't add these brushes as part of the links, but I should if people want to use these. And uh, you know what? Some of them are Finna Bears, some of them are not. This is the thing from the dollar store, if I'm not mistaken. So. I'm horrible at keeping my brushes clean. I'm not really good at them. So that's why I don't try not to buy too expensive of a brush, especially not for the mixed media part of it. So as you can see, I'm adding some here and there, just so, um, I don't know if you guys have played with this paste, but it's really fantastic. Oh, I love it. And this one is coming out. The nice thing about no two pieces are alike, which is what's nice about it. I think it's time to add the mint green. Yay. Okay. Hold on. I still have a little bit of blue here. Let's kind of get it off my paintbrush because otherwise it will really contaminate. And it's contaminating it, but okay. So... I really like this is gives it like um, a really light uh, effect if you see Finn's uh, she actually did one and this was the most prominent color and I love how it turned out but somehow I find it so light it doesn't give me that rust effect the way I look I like it so I end up changing it after although I, I'm liking this one now it's looking really good so I don't know you know, I got to go back and forth between, um, this is too much, um, what I like and what I, and my taste changes as I, as I go. So, uh, so unfortunately I only, so somebody's asking, what do I use to clean these brushes? So I unfortunately only use water and I clean it really, really well, but I am, as I said, I'm terrible at cleaning um things i would suggest maybe using soap or if anything i mean sh if you want to go stronger then i'm sure there's some cleaners out there that will clean these really well or 
the other suggestion is using buying cheap brushes that are only used for these type of materials that you don't mind that they will get basically dirty from uh, or or you know what I mean I think you can just always buy a new one if that's the case um, okay I put too much here okay so you see now now if you look at this for me um, the color now it's missing what it's missing red so you see I go back and forth until I find the combo that I like so I find that it's missing red for me it's not rusted if it's not red so I go back and forth between them you see um, so here's my red paintbrush which I did before I tried before okay so um, okay Yeah, you see, I'm a red kind of person, so this is my problem. No, I'm not a red, actually, I like blue more, but I find that it needs to swim. I'm doing a really small dry brush, because I don't want a lot of red, I just want a little bit of red to kind of peek through, okay? I think that's good. So I'm going back and forth, you see, I'm going, I go back and forth between the different ones, the different mediums, because you really want to be able to have those tones I'm just washing my paintbrush. You want to be able to have those tones in between, right? And you can't have that if you're just, um, what do you call it? If you're just going to just use one color, right? So that's why. I just want to make sure nobody's messaging me. Okay, no, it's not. It's not used, Yasmin, right? Messaging me. Okay, so just checking to make sure. Okay, no, that's fine. So. So I really love the combination of the, both the the rest paste and the and the the um, patina effect. So the two of them together for me is the best combination. So when before she had Finna Bear came out with the rust paste, what I used to do is I used to um, basically use some turquoise acrylic paint and basically just um, combine combine that with the rust paste which came out the year before. So you see that like I just keep on working until I am happy with with the results and I'll get this closer so you can see hopefully let's see how close can you get? Is it good? It's too dark, but you know, they get the idea. So that's basically what I like to do is just continue to work until I'm happy with the results, which I think I am right now. You see, I like that, that it's a little bit rusted here, a little bit there maybe a little bit of blue over here yeah because now I'm gonna be adding the gold which is um, the wax so which is really nice hold on no I think I still need blue you see I keep on I look at it here and it looks good but when I look at it on, on the computer it doesn't so that means that sometimes the I find that when I look at my when I'm doing a video or like a show and I look at the I look at the computer I can see it much clearer than when I see it right in front of me I'm not sure why that is but I find that that's helpful for me to see where things are missing if if they're missing anything and I think it needs to go here a little bit more turn out I think it like turned out a little bit more oxidized than the other one my other one was a little bit more more on the reddish side and this is more on the bluish side but it's still nice so here's the other one but I still have not added the um, so this is the original it's hard to see it looks uh, it's original this is the blue one okay so hold on let me just clean up here this mess so I can get out my waxes and be able to uh, work with them okay so just one second 
just want to close everything and look how quickly it dry like this is I mean it's just wet from the paste but the actual plaster dried really quickly which is nice okay Oops. oh and you know what actually before before I finish I want to add a little bit more of the brass I just realized now that I must have done that also on top um, let me get another paintbrush that is clean uh, hold on See, this is the only problem with my paintbrushes that they end up not being so clean and then um, and then they I can't use them so I'm going to just kind of dry brush this a little bit I just want a little bit of this brass color that kind of got hidden every underneath it gives it a nice shine as you can see and it's really important to dry brush it so I'm trying to get off as much as I can off my brush so I can just lightly brush it on the onto the um, wings the trick with dry brushing is doing this really f fast movement so that the um, so that the actual brush barely touches the barely touches the the actual project because if it touches it too much then you end up with with too much of that color that you probably didn't want okay there we go so I just added a little bit of that brass which gave it a really nice highlight and hold on now I want to clean this up and let's see if I I can show off how good it cleans up so hold on because the whole point of this is that it cleans up really nicely and it does nice I haven't used these pieces I just I made this project before I got this mat which I recently just bought so I'm excited that it cleans so nicely. Oops, sorry, I'm trying to get um, the wipes to come out. And, uh, oops, I see something here. I mean there's still stuff to clean here but I just want to get going I don't want I don't need to show all this um, cleaning part on this so I'm going to just give it a quick dry just because when I put the waxes I wanted it to be completely dry so nothing transfers So basically look it's basically dry the plaster dries really really quickly now I don't know if you've tried any of you have tried these waxes maybe some of you have the new waxes by Prima Finabare I'll show them to you now okay so as I said my favorite is Oh, this is white gold. No, my favorite vintage gold, which I have to take out. I just realized I took the wrong one out. Uh, white gold is really nice too, but my favorite is vintage gold. Hold on, I'm looking for it. Where is it? Where did it go? Oh, there it is. Vintage gold. They have some really nice ones like... Um, aged brass and bronze bronze so these are really nice also too you could use but my favorite is the vintage gold and the rich copper those are the two favorite ones and i'm going to be using the vintage gold and as i said that's the one i'm giving away on my blog um so so people use these in different ways 
So this is how it is. I used it last time as well in another one of my um, projects. My favorite way of using this, and let's see, I need some more light here. My favorite way is using is using my fingers. Some people use a stipple brush uh, or a regular brush. I just really love using my finger for this. I find I get the most control out of it. And this is what I'm going to use. And I want to see if, oh yeah, you can see, actually it shows really well. Oops, you see that is too much. If I put too much, you can, you can remove it right away. Or you might have to, okay, there we go. If you do remove right away, you can, otherwise it's permanent. So if I have to be careful not to have too much on your finger, I'm going to, I want to kind of highlight all the, all the texture everywhere. And they smell so good, I have to say, they smell really, really good. So, um, I'm impressed with how like this, is in here, I'm gonna show you, right, let's see if I can do it from close up so you can actually really see how nicely it goes. Okay. Is it harder for me to do it this way? But you can really see the nice um, texture it gives. The beautiful highlights, it just, just makes it so nice. Okay, I focus now. Okay, so I'm gonna do the rest of the other side. And I think it's out of focus now, I don't know why. I try to get it in focus and now it's not working, I'm sorry, this is Fast forward this part after if you're actually watching this live, not live. I don't know. It looks as if it's not in focus to me. I'm like, oh, now it is. Okay, good. So I'm using this, and I'm going to do is I'm going to add rich co copper, which is another one of the waxes. It's a little bit of more of a reddish tone because I want to give that reddish tone to these wings as well, right? These didn't come out as reddish as the other ones, but it's still nice to do. And, okay. See? Mm -hmm. I'll put too much wax here. Okay, let's see. So now, oh, I really like this. Okay, good. So now I'm going to Put some of the rich copper. And I think that's the one I use, yeah. So this is rich copper. It's called, uh, it's a metallic wax. So it's the same as the other kind. There's three different types of waxes. There's the metallic wax, which are like metallic in color. Then there's the opal magic, which kind of change colors depending on what you use them on. And then there is the antique brilliance, which kind of have a brown undertone inside of them. And they're, they're really good for antiquing things. So you might not be able to see what I'm doing, like in the sense of um, um, the sense of the red, because there's so much red on it already. But it really gives it a really nice reddish tone. And I want to see. Um, It helps, everything like really helps to, m when you're mixing all these products together, to get these different highlights in the actual project. So I'm trying not to use it everywhere because I still want the gold to be, to show, but I want those reddish kind of highlights on top. So, oops. so you can see there's the reddish right there that I just added and um, and the gold, the red looks really nice on it as well. So I try to put it on. Okay, so there is the, there is the wings, which I really, really, really like. Okay, and then, um, 
I took one of the words. Now this is just wooden words that I found at Michael's and let me just find where I put what I did with them. They're just wood wooden cut words. I brought them with other oh, there. So these are different than the other ones. They're you know what they sell them at Michael's for like a dollar fifty. They're very cheap. Um, so I thought the other one has inspire on it. Maybe this one should be journey. Yeah, that's nice. So just so to change it a little bit. Okay. And basically where the wings can take you on a journey. So that's nice. And what I did last is I used the, where is it? Oh, here it is. This is uh, the new Prima Finove Art Alchemy Acrylic Paint. It's called Sparks. This one is called Dragon's Eye because <laughs> the color reminds you of a dragon's eye, I guess. It reminded Finove of that. It's a really sparkly color. Really, really nice. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the word and also add a few more highlights onto this. Actually, before I do that, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, paint this just a little bit with the rich copper. I just want to put like an undertone underneath it. It's not as nice. It doesn't go as nice on wood. It goes better on the mediums. But I'm just putting this so like when I add the, um, the paint, it looks a bit darker. So I'm just doing this just as a base instead of doing gesso. I mean, it still looks really nice, don't get me wrong, but it kind of will get lost if it's the same color as what I have underneath. So you can use more wax, almost like paint, and it still looks really nice. There you go, you see it looks, it colors it really nicely, but um, I want to add the dragon's eye sparks on it. Hi, Alina. Okay. So this is, I'm just gonna use a little bit of the, what I have on the lid, okay? Just to kind of paint this. Mm -hmm. And you notice that I use my fingers a lot to do things, that's just me. You don't have to, you could wear gloves don't need to do what I do. It's probably not so good for me. But um, there we go. This looks nice. And um, what I want to do is add a little bit of these as highlights. Um, I'm not even sure you can see that that much right now. Now these are really sparkly, so they really show up nicely. Oops nicely on the on the background let me move this so we'll add it after um, I think I've added too much here so between the sparks I and mean, you could, could you do the th same thing it's a different type of technique I mean the, t the sparks are really shiny where the metallic waxes are are a little bit more dull than the sparks but still have a metallic effect so this is more like a sparkly effect while the metal what the well the waxes give like um like a metallic uh, sorry i mean to see yeah, a metallic effect yeah as opposed to sparkly these are really sparkly and nice and i really like them so let me see some here. I think I might add another coat to the words. I'm waiting for it to kind of dry up. And then I will dry. I will add another one. So you can see, I mean, these turned out completely different. Um, completely different than the other one that I made before. So you never know what you're gonna get, right? Because it doesn't always apply, you cannot exactly mimic the application of paste. 
so okay let's go back on this and I guess I'll use my fingers again you don't have to and create oops am I not in the Mm-hmm. Oh, I really like that. Yeah, see, now it's really standing out, which is nice. Okay, so let me close this. Mm -hmm. And I want to wipe my hands from the dirt. So you can see all the different colors. So you can see here the, the blue, turquoise blue and the red copper and the brown and you can see the sparks and also the red rust paste and even in between you see a little bit of the mint so everything together really gives you that rusted look which is what you're looking at you were looking you're I'm looking to do right so now I'm just going to use my 3d gel again and I'm going to glue the word my finger yet again let's see where it's going to touch yeah I think it needs a little bit more okay now at least I know where it's kind of touching so I can put it on those spots okay good uh, and then I'm going to just clean it up. So whenever I put it on, although the gel dries clear, I somehow always clean it up because then you'll get these like clumps, always, but you could get like these clear clumps and I really don't want, so on the places where you don't need it, it's not necessary for it to be seen. And what I do, oops, I need to put a little bit more of this paint on I just rubbed off when I was fiddling with it which actually looks really nice but that's not my intention okay so hold on I just want to for a second just paint this again this was kind of came off okay good and then I'm just gonna get in there a little bit in I'm going to get into the areas where I saw the gel and create um, some more texture. So here, actually, I'm going to go a little bit around. I'm going to make kind of a circle around because it will define the word a little bit better. Let's see. Yeah, I really like that. So. Let me just bring both of them and you'll see how like the nice thing about this piece is that you can create two different projects out of the same thing. Oops, here it goes. Here is the two of them and yeah, they're, they're similar, but they don't look similar when you look at them in person. It's funny enough, they look different. Um, I think this is more reddish in tone. The light is kind of shining. Let me like. Uh, right on it and this is the this is more of like a golden in tone so those are the two inspire and journey so these are the two that I made and because my friend Kim was the one who gave these to me she's getting one of these she can choose which one of the two she wants um, I just want to thank everybody for coming today and please join us next week as uh, oh gosh I think it's Heather next week oh somebody help me I'm not sure well Join us next week for another show. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. And have a fantastic week. I hope this Monday morning it inspired you for the rest of the week. And you can, not morning, afternoon, and or. And you can just continue on and, and get inspired the whole week through. I don't know if I'm making sense or not. But have a wonderful week either way. Okay, bye.